Hello everyone, so suppose that you have a particle sitting at the top of a sphere of radius r and you give the particle some initial impulse such that it starts moving horizontally with a velocity of u. Now the question that we want to address in this video is how fast does that particle have to be going? In other words, what's the condition on u in order for the particle to leave the surface of the sphere immediately rather than starting to slide down the surface of the sphere? Now I'm going to specify that we want to do this without considering the forces acting on the particle. And the reason I'm specifying that is just because I think it's interesting, because the usual way to answer a question like this would be to imagine that the particle does move in a circle. Uh, you consider the forces acting on the particle, the centripetal force acting on the particle, and require that the normal contact force is zero at the very start of the motion. That would be a force-based condition for the particle to leave immediately. So I actually discussed that method in a video a couple of years ago. There's nothing wrong with it, but it recently occurred to me that you can answer the same question using a purely kinematics-based method, which I found interesting, and so that's what we're going to discuss today. So the first thing we need to do if we're going to describe what this particle is doing kinematically is set up a coordinate system. So I've just placed some Cartesian axes in the usual orientation x and y um, centered at the initial position of the particle. So what we want to do as a starting point is come up with an equation that describes the trajectory of our particle in that coordinate system. And to start off with, we're actually going to assume that the particle does indeed leave the surface of the sphere immediately so that it's basically behaving as a projectile. And we can answer questions about projectiles using the constant acceleration equations, the Suvat equations, um, and considering the motion of the particle projected horizontally and vertically. So let's start by considering the motion in the y direction. So your s in your suvat um, is the displacement, and by definition, that is just the y coordinate. What about u? The u here is not the same as the u in the diagram, because the u in the diagram is a horizontal velocity. In fact, because it starts off moving purely horizontally, your u in the y direction is already zero. Um, the velocity at some arbitrary later time, v, we don't really care about that for the purposes of figuring out what the trajectory looks like. The acceleration, well, we're going to assume that it's moving under a uniform gravitational field. It's going to be minus g because it's pointing downwards, and we've defined y to be upwards. And time is just going to be an arbitrary parameter. I'm just going to leave that as t. So the relevant variables here are s, u, a, and t, so we can link them together using our kinematic equation s equals ut plus a half at squared. The ut term disappears, of course, because u is zero, um, and you end up with just y equals minus a half gt squared. And it makes sense that y is always negative because we defined the origin of our coordinate system to be at the starting point, and we know it's going to move downwards because of gravity. So that's y as a function of time. What if we want y as a function of x to understand the actual shape of the trajectory? Well, in the horizontal direction, we don't even have to do suvat because there is no horizontal acceleration, assuming that we're ignoring air resistance. So we can just do distance is speed times time in the x direction, which is just saying that x is equal to u times t, and then we can rearrange that for t and substitute it into our equation for y to get y in terms of x. And if you do that, you'll find that y is equal to minus g x squared over 2u squared, because t is just x over u. Now here's where things start to get interesting. This is a parabola, because y is proportional to x squared, but we can approximate a parabola as a circle. You can approximate any curve as a circle, it's called the osculating circle. And there exist formulae to figure out the properties of that circle which best approximates a curve at a given point. Now because the spherical surface that the particle may or may not be sliding down has a circular cross-section, that seems like a sensible thing to do, right? To approximate our parabolic trajectory with a circle. Now I've just quoted this formula here for radius of curvature. If you're interested, you can go and look up the derivation of that somewhere, um, but I'm just going to quote it here. It's 1 plus y dash squared all to the power of 3 halves over y double dash, where a dash represents a derivative, and we take the modulus of all of that to ensure that the radius is positive. Now, we want to approximate the parabola as a circle um, at the very initial part of the motion, right? Because we care about whether the particle leaves the sphere immediately or not, and therefore I'm going to just specify that we're evaluating all of this at x equals zero for this problem. So we better go back and differentiate y twice. That's fairly easy to do because y is just a polynomial. So differentiate once y dash is going to be minus gx over u squared, the two on the bottom disappears, and you differentiate again, and it becomes a constant y double dash is just minus g over u squared. 
since we are evaluating the radius of curvature when x is zero and the initial point of the motion, uh, your y dash is zero, which makes sense because it's the maximum point of a parabola, it's a turning point of the curve. So y dash is zero, this thing becomes much simpler, you just get modulus of one over y double dash, because the numerator is just one, it's one to the power of three halves. Um, y double dash is minus g over u squared, so we do one over it, flip it upside down, and take the modulus, which makes the minus sign disappear. So your radius of curvature at the beginning of the trajectory is u squared over g. Now, if the particle is trying to move along a circle with a very small radius, in other words, the initial radius of curvature is very small, then your trajectory roughly will look something like that, this blue line that I've just added on to start with. But if it's trying to move uh, with a bigger radius of curvature along a circle with a bigger radius, then the trajectory will look more like this curve that I originally drew on. And that fact leads us to the key insight that the particle will immediately leave the surface of the sphere if and only if the trajectory doesn't try to curve into the sphere. In other words, it will leave the surface if the trajectory looks more like this black curve there than this blue curve here. Mathematically, all that is saying is that the radius of curvature should be at least r in order for the particle to leave the surface. So the condition is going to be u squared over g is at least r. And then if you want to express that as a condition on u, of course, it's just u has to be at least the square root of g times the radius. So there you have it, a purely kinematical approach to a problem that we usually uh, answer using forces. When I first had this idea, I wasn't convinced that it was going to work, but it did. And it's consistent with the force-based approach, which itself justifies um, the use of this method. So thanks for watching. Hope it's been interesting and see you soon.